Lawn Hill Gabe here out on location. Uh, today we're coming from Mesa, Arizona at the Beer Research Institute. Uh, Matt and Greg actually gave us a little tour, a little history on the beer. And uh, between the two of them actually, they have about 15 years of combined homebrew experience. Uh, basically what they wanted to do is they wanted to bring out small batch beer, good quality. They also, they've already dialed in their craft, but uh, one thing that I want to point out to you with these folks is that you need to come out here and try every beer that they put on because it might not be here tomorrow. And that's a really good thing because people tend to get into the more commercial aspect of beer. These folks aren't, they're total opposite. Either you come and drink our beer, if it's good enough, we might put it back on in a little while, we might not. But you know, that's just what they want to do. That's their point. They want to come out, put good craft beer on the shelf, or excuse me, on their taps, and uh, make sure that if you're going to come and drink it, you come to the shop and drink it. Plus, they're putting out some killer food. Yeah, so really good food, really good beer variety. And you know, for those of you that are, are into home brewing or, or maybe getting into home brewing for the first time, everything about it is experimental and it's research. And you never want to be consistent. You always want to try to make you know a better beer than the last one you make. And talking with Matt and talking with uh, you know the guys here and learning their process and how they're doing things, you can tell the reason why they don't want to keep the same beer on tap isn't because it's not a favorite but it's because they always have bigger ideas going forward and you know that mentality is only going to do big things and it's only going to take them a long way. What's so. fun about sticking in a rut right? yeah. when you yeah. just have the big great plane of beer yeah. Definitely. possibilities. Definitely. So uh, today we actually selected one of their brews that they have on tap. It's called uh, Street Cred. It's an American dark ale and uh, Gabe talked a bit about the specs on the beer. Yeah, so when we were talking with Matt um, about the American dark ale, um, trying to find out, you know, I don't want to put it in a category, but just to try to find a baseline to begin with, you know, what was your idea, what was your thinking when you came up with it? And Matt was saying that originally they were looking at a black IPA, which for those of you that are still pretty new to it, black IPA is going to be a mix of some of your darker roasty malts, so think of your stouts, think of your porters that are going to taste more oak, more nutty, more, uh, you know, more roasted, um, and then your IPAs, which are, you know, your more bitterness, floral, and hoppy. So that's typically what a black IPA is. Um, what Matt was saying is what they were looking for was something similar to that, but when you mix the two together, it becomes overbearing. And, and I took it as, it's almost like not David and Goliath, it's like Goliath and Goliath are fighting for you know the most taste in that beer. So they wanted something that you still got the roastiness, you still got the bitterness and hop, but dialed down a little bit. So they played with the ingredients. Um, some of the malts that they were using was a two-row malt, a wheat malt, a C10, Victory, and Carafa 2. Um, Carafa 2 is the, wheat, is the uh, malt that they were using for the color um, and for some of that roastiness. Um, and again, going back to what I was saying, um, and some of the hops were Warrior, uh, Magnum, and, and Cascade as well. Um, but the Carafa 2 is what gives the beer its darker, more roasty, uh, darker color, roasted flavor. And going back to what I was saying about homebrewing, you always want to be experimenting, you always want to do research. Um, so there's a process in homebrewing um, that you mix all the grains together and you get um, a mash. They basically took the ingredients they were working with, kind of changed it up, tricked it out, yeah, yeah. tricked it out a bit in the way they were making it, and they started hitting exactly what they wanted to. So everything about beer research is experimental. It's you know you can tell they're doing their research. And I love that idea. One of the things we were talking about with, with Matt was, you know, just because you didn't get the flavor you wanted when you're making a beer, doesn't mean those flavors, you know, don't go together. Maybe you're just doing the process incorrectly. So they knew what they had, they knew what they wanted, they stuck with what they had, just changed it up a bit, and now they have a damn good beer. Damn good beer. Yeah. So it's sitting at a 45 on the IBU scale. So for those of you that follow, it's not going to be a high bitterness beer. It's actually going to be pretty mellow. I mean, if, if you're going to get some of that bitterness. But not a lack of flavor. By yeah, means. yeah, by no means whatsoever. It's not going to be a punch in the mouth. It's going to be a nice, clean, you know, you're going to get that roasted flavor. You're going to get that, uh, uh, that smoky, little bit of a flavor. But um, you're also going to get some of the bitterness that comes through with, with some of the hops. And some of the hops that they were using. Um, is a good, definitely a good variety to use um, while, st while still sticking true to an IPA. Um, and it's 6.7 on the ABV, uh, or 6.7 ABV, so still, you know, pretty good. Yeah. So, so this is going to be more of a balanced flavor between the roasted malts and the hop, you know, the hop profile. Uh, but we're going to give it a go and give, give, us our, give you guys our honest opinion. You can notice, you can see it's a dark black, got a light tan head to it, which is the, the, the malt that they were using, is what gives that. Smell the, the roastiness of the malts 
and, but you can also pick up the scent of the hops as well, just on the nose. Yep. Right off the bat, the first taste that you get is a lot of that roasty flavor up front, but then you can start tasting some of the hop that they were using. You taste the citrusy, you taste a little bit of the grapefruit, um, but but you know definitely a very good balance. Matt, we've had some black IPAs before. I don't think we've done a review on them yet. Um, but when Matt and I were talking, we were all talking about the IPAs. Exactly what they were trying to go for with uh, street cred is exactly what when we were talking about that. That's exactly what 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 you taste. Most of those black IPAs are very strong, very bitter, and it's it. You can't, it's almost like you can't finish which, the whole which flavor, flavor. Which flavor are you trying to pick out yeah. when you taste the beer? Yeah. And this, are, this is a roast up front, hops in the back. So, I mean, you get the sweetness and the roastiness of the, hot, of the malts, but on the back side, the hop bitterness actually cleans up everything. Really yeah. Really nice. So, if you guys are a stout fan, if you're a porter fan, um, and you're an IPA fan, yeah, or if you're an IPA fan, right. definitely a good beer, definitely one you have to try out. I mean, it's, what when I first saw it, I mean, I'm still a sucker. I'm thinking, oh god, that's a big, terrifying beer. What the hell is that going to taste like? Um, and then when you actually taste it, it's like a little puppy. You got nothing to be worried about. Yeah, you're good. It's, it's going to treat you pretty nice. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> so on uh, a scale of one to five, what are you going to give this beer? I'm going to give it a very strong four and a half. Again, when I first saw it, I mean, again, I'm, I'm you know, I'm a big IPA guy. I'm not a porter or stout fan, so when I see it, I'm like, I'll be honest. I kind of give that. All right, I'm try almost tricking myself a little bit, saying it's. All right, we'll see, we'll give it a shot, but, and I don't mean this in a bad way whatsoever, but the beer definitely surprised me. Um, I was expecting it to be a lot of roasted flavor, a lot of oakiness, not at all. Damn good balance, damn good um, a balance of that, of the, of the roastedness and, and the hops there, um, and it's just great beer, just a great beer. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm with you on this, I'll give you a four and a half. The thing I like most about this is, I, I do like IPAs, but because of the way he described what his final product was going to be, this was after I tasted the beer. It was spot on. Everything yeah. that he said married with the experience that I got. You're going to have a very clean, roasty malt flavor, but you're going to have a little bit of bitterness, bitterness on the backside. He hit it spot on. Yeah. It was a well, I mean, he knows what he wants in the outcome of his product. This is exactly the translate, the translate right into the wine. Definitely. So definitely a good four and a half. The question is, would you tap this beer? If, I would tap the shit out of it, but like Matt was saying, they don't they don't sell them in the kegs yet, so I'm gonna have to come and and maybe pint the shit out of it or growler the shit out of it for now. But I'll, I'll take that and I'll buy a few growlers. That's right. for sure. I tap the shit out of this beer too, <laughs> and like you said, it may not be on tap tomorrow. It may not be on tap for the rest of the year. But you better believe the next time he has the uh, <laughs> the street cred, because right now we're giving the street cred and it's earning the street cred. You stop in the shop, give Matt a call. See if he can put you on a little tour. Definitely the food is on point. Uh, but yes, definitely. Definitely kind of shit out of this beer. So. Uh, the Cilantro Gabe come from Bear Research Institute in Mesa. Don't forget to growl or follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Instagram and Twitter. And we'll see you guys next time. Cheers.